Hi, it's Adi, and we're going to look into another tutorial here um, about how to make a stencil art on a brick wall. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how to create a pattern and how we can use that pattern to just um, create a bigger picture. And it would be useful in many um, different ways. So let's open this file. So uh, it, it's a titleable picture. You can find heaps of them on internet if you go on internet and look for titleable pictures, or you can produce it as well. So these are the pictures that if you put two of them beside each other, you wouldn't be able to tell where that edge is uh, was before. So it's not actually that difficult to make. Um, it takes a little bit of time though. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it all and then I'm going to go to edit and after edit I'm going to go to define pattern and when you click on define pattern you can just name it whatever you want so in this case it's like bricks and click um, or give it whatever name you want and click OK and what you have is your pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new file and I am just going to, let's go for web um, 1280 by 1024, that's cool. So let's say I have this picture and I want to put um, the pattern on top. So what I can do is I can create a new layer then I can go to blending options and on, uh, in the blending options what I can do is uh, right here, the third one from the bottom, it says pattern overlay and if you select on your pattern overlay you would be able to um, select your pattern or change the thing but we cannot see anything here yet because this layer was empty so we need to fill it up with anything and then do that and it would work um, easy as you can see if we have something as soon as you click on there bam your texture is there if you click on your pattern you can see that I have my bricks here I basically create twice uh, just for this tutorial. If I click on that one you can see that the whole uh, wall is being covered with that pattern that we have. The other things that we also have here is we can just scale it up or scale it down and to make it bigger or smaller files. Um, when you're using a pattern just make sure that as you can see because this is a pattern that they uh, eventually worked on make sure that you avoid these sorts of seams because you can tell like these are the lines they're not on horizontal ones on but on the vertical ones they're, they don't go well together so this is supposed to be just one brick if it goes like different differently if you're making them just make sure that this brick uh, is copied and uh, pasted here so when you cut it in half and you cut this one in half both of these bricks are going to be the same so you won't have any of these color differences so you wouldn't have things like this anyways after you uh, create the pattern and you have the wall like that then uh, your layer is um, okay there are a couple of things you can do one is you can just rasterize your layer style and as soon as you do that your layer um, style will be will disappear and you will have your own layer the other way that you do this is actually you can right click on this and convert it into a smart object as soon as you do that you can see that little thing a little icon appears here which says it's a smart object it means that if you double click on it uh, you will get this message and you will be able to open it in another that as you can see that's it says layer one dot PSB and it's a um, all you can see is just that single layer with the same effects and everything else you have there you can just convert like a series of layers into a smart object and you will have the smart object uh, always editable which is very very good non-destructive way to work on your graphics when you're done with you know, working on that for like for example let's say I want to make the pattern slightly smaller I can do that click OK that's fine close this and as soon as you do that, ask whether you want to save it or not. If you say save, there's not going to be a file. But what happens is in this main file that you had layer there, this will also be changed. Then what we're going to do is we're going to name this one wall. And 
Then we're going to bring another picture to put it on the wall as um, the stencil art that we're going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this um, Iron Man picture that I have here. So I'm going to open this one and I will put this picture on the wall as a stencil art. So how would I be able to do this? It's actually quite simple with a fourth tool from your toolbar here. It says quick selection tool or W. If uh, you have two options here, one is the magic wand and the other one is quick selection tool. So I'm gonna go with quick selection tool and uh, by just simply pressing the uh, open curly bracket and close curly bracket, you would be able to change your uh, brush size at any time. So if you click around, you can see that you would actually be able to add up the bright area quite quickly, but as you can see, there are some parts of it being selected at the same time, which we didn't want to select. So I'm gonna hold the option key, and as I do that, you can see that the plus at the center of my circle, my cursor is going to change into a minus. It means that it's gonna um, cut this part out of my selection and eventually I'm gonna have like I'm gonna be able to just click on those areas that I uh, didn't want to select if I do that by mistake and I just add up a little bit then I can just click on plus again and I can reduce that also you would be able to reduce your size uh, brush size at any moment or if you hold the command and, or control on PC and the spacebar at the same time you would be able to zoom into your picture or um, if you need to zoom out you just um, press command and spacebar and move your mouse to the left and it will zoom out to the right it will zoom in to the left it will zoom out of course my computer is going a little bit crazy that's why it's not co cooperating really well and then let's get rid of this part of the um, and try to make it as close as possible we're not going to talk about the selection and how you can just create a really cool selection here but there are ways that you can do that you could use other tools that are already there like the pen tool or um, polygonal lasso tool would, wouldn't be a bad idea at some points um, also If you're using a tablet, you might also want to be using the um, loss of tool itself. So it would give you a freehand option. Let's say, because this is not uh, about the accuracy of your picture, let's say like if you're happy with the selection here. So next, what we want to do is we want to go to uh, select and then we want to go to, um, first of all, make sure, because what we selected was the bright area around and the reason I did that because of the contrast of the background and the foreground so what I need to do is I need to inverse my selection so I would be selecting the Iron Man and of course I would be able to go to the um, refine edges and look at my selection also I would be able to look at it with the background also I would be able to look at the um, alpha channel that I selected which is basically the same as layer mask so you will have this picture and you can see like whether you have um, selected everything right or not as you can see I have two dark patches here which is not really cool but the cool thing about this is I can first of all I can smooth up my selections so as soon as I do that you can see that most of these edges are smoothing up but not around here that's what I do not like you can see that I have some parts that are not super cool also you would be able to feather it off but as you can see there is this ghost thing around it that I don't like you can also bring up the contrast and it will make it a little bit more sharp even though that you use your feather and eventually you would be able to shift your uh, selection in and out basically um, extract or contract your selection and it will give me relatively a nice selection anyways in here you would be able to choose different options that we have output to a selection output to a layer mask or 
uh, eventually a new layer or new layer with layer mask. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new layer with layer mask and as soon as I click you can see that I will have a new layer here and my previous layer is hidden. My new layer is basically the same thing as I had before but now with this layer mask added to it I'm holding the option or alt key on my keyboard and if I click here you can see that the that black and white image that I showed you before but without that patch and that the reason I do not have that patch is because I used the uh, edge contraction tool so it's basically I shifted the, the edges a little bit inward and that's why it happens like that so what I need to do now is I need to grab this one and move it to the other picture that I had uh, and place it there so it's a little bit big I'm just gonna resize the picture just make sure when you're resizing hold your um, shift key if you don't do that your picture is going to be um, squeezed or squashed you don't want that this is wrong if you hold the shift key you can see that it will uh, correct the proportions and it will resize your image with the right proportions so I'm just gonna place this picture here and what I will do is let's make it a little bit bigger. So let's say about that much. That's cool. So I have this picture with my layer mask, and that's what I needed. The other thing I need to do now is I need to convert this picture into a black and white picture. So what I will do is go to image adjustment and go to black and white depends on how well you want a contrast to be or you have some presets here like dark, uh, darker infrared for example to make it like quite dark or um, maximum black we don't want that um, most probably I would say neutral density is a little bit too bright let's go for the infrared didn't look that bad so can go for infrared and let's say that's what we want to put there so what I'm gonna do next is a little bit tricky so if I want this picture and I wanted to put it on the wall one way the easiest way to do so is just to convert this layer from normal to a multiplied picture and you can see that it's kind of like being merged there and I'm kind of having this um, like a stain on the wall but still not as cool as I wanted to if I grab this into a new layer and duplicate this layer and convert this one into a screen picture you can see that I'm having the whites like the whites are being painted on the wall as well but still if you look at it it's kind of like all right it's like a poster which is kind of like pasted on the wall or something but still doesn't have that look that I'm looking for so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna select these two layers remember one is change to screen mode for the whites and the other one which is multiply is for the blacks if you look at the difference uh, when you're changing your layer from normal to multiply, all the whites are going to disappear and all the dark areas are going to be multiplied to whatever you have there, so it's going to get darker. If you use the screen mode, it basically does the complete opposite thing. So what you're going to get is the bright areas and not, not the dark areas. So if you see some shadows here, that's why. Uh, that's because they are gray and not completely dark if it's absolutely black it's going to disappear all right so we have these two layers together i'm going to select them both and what i will do next is and i will select convert to smart object as soon as you do that it will turn into one single layer then what i want to do is i want to uh, create a new um, layer mask what I can do also is just down here I would be able to select add my layer mask but without uh, before doing so what I will do is I will select this layer here and I will select it all and then when I go back to this layer I could be 
able to let's select it and copy it first. So select and copy and then go back here on this picture. And for those of you who still don't know what a shortcut for copy is, if you're using Mac, it's Command C. If you're using PC, it's Control C. And to paste, it's Command V or Control V. And um, after going back to this layer, the background copy, which I'm going to change it to Iron Man, uh, I will click on this little icon here, the third one from the left down at the bottom. It says Add Layer Mask, and as soon as you click on that one, you can see that there I'm having this little uh, white screen there. So I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key on my keyboard and click on that one. As you can see, it's absolutely white. But if I press Command V to paste it, it will paste the same image, but as I said before, whatever is in your um, layer mask is going to be absolutely black and white. White means it's there, black means it's not there. So um, for those parts, this is exactly what we want because we want the paint to be on the wall but not on those um, cement layers or like those um, dark edges in between of bricks. So that's exactly what it does for us. Best thing we can do is just go to image, adjustment, and we can just play around a little bit with contrast, make it a little bit more contrasty, and maybe not too dark, just keep it as is, and click OK. Let's go back to the picture, and now here's the magic. Before that, it looked like this, but as soon as I turn on the layer mask, you can see that it's being uh, looks like it's been painted on the wall and of course I have a lot of uh, black areas or white areas what I can do is I could have just go to uh, the actual layer as you can see it's a, it has so many gray levels what I could have done was I could have just gone to threshold and converted into a black and white image so this is for the white areas so I can just basically bring up the whites pretty much and this one is for the black area so I can just go to adjust and threshold and bring this one to bring the blacks it depends on how well you want to do it you can spend enough time on it to just get enough detail out of it but I would say like this is pretty much do the job for now and I'll click OK and if I close this file of course it's gonna ask whether I want to save it or not remember if you save this it will be it's basically confirming that you're changing this layer into something new click OK and if you go back to your actual image you can see that it's kind of looking um, pretty cool here if you think it's still uh, not dark enough for um, the gray areas you can just simply drag and duplicate this layer and it's just kind of getting darker if you don't want to make the whites too bright you can just change this one to multiply and the blacks are going to get darker but the whites are going to remain the same if you want to do the reverse one just change it to screen the blacks are going to remain the same but the whites are going to be whiter and if you think you needed more you can just duplicate that one several times more and you will have more whitish image or if you want to change that to multiply and let's say if you want a black to be more black you can just change it like that and eventually to get rid of all these layers you can convert it into another smart object and we can simply uh, name it whatever you want and voila this is your um, stencil art that you were looking for I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial my name is Adi Alemi and if you like this video and it helped you in a way please like it because that's gonna help me and please share this video on your Facebook page I would really really appreciate it the more you watch my videos the more I would be able to record new tutorials for you thank you for watching and see you soon